Hey everybody, it's your host Sally Allen again on the Sally Allen podcast. And today I have one of my youngest, youngest guests that I've ever had before. Her name is Kiera Heaven and she is Miss South Las Vegas Teen USA. Yes. Soon to be a published author and she graduated high school at 16. The reason why I invited her to be on my podcast as a guest, um, I met her at a networking event and I was so impressed with her resume and her bio, but not just that, how driven she is. And um, to accomplish what she's accomplished at 16, there's something driving her, there is something just fueling her resiliency, and that's the reason why she's on the show today. So Kira, welcome to the Sally Allen Podcast. Thank you. Yes, you told me earlier this is your first podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm so honored that you are here and I get to do this first with you. Yeah. yeah, Welcome. So we start talking about um, you graduated high school at 16. Yes. And then your mom's sitting over there and she piped in and she said, you got to tell her why. So I am curious. Tell me why. So... I was able to experience like the normal high school experience, um, although my first year was COVID, so it wasn't that normal. But I did go back back to high school my sophomore year, and it was great. I was a cheerleader, so I was able to experience that. I did go to prom, and all of those things were great. I just think that I have a lot of goals and stuff that I wanted to accomplish, and the high school experience can prolong your education, and I just wasn't too worried about being the most popular girl in high school or those sort of things that seem to matter to a lot of kids my age and so I just you know wanted to get it over with and focus on other things in my life. Wow so you went hard and fast yeah (laughs) to get it over with when you say you wanted to get it over with and you, you you were done in 16 what did that entail what did you have to do to be finished high school you know to complete high school at 16? So my junior year, which was last year, my junior kind of senior year, I guess, um, I did everything online and I kind of just took like advanced classes so I could finish early. So it was just a lot of like doubling up on my classes and now I'm done. So you did this online and it takes a lot of discipline for people to go to school online or do anything at home, even work from home. Some people Mm -hmm. struggle with that. What kept you disciplined to do that? I guess just like knowing I wanted to get it over with and wanted to be done with it. Um, Homeschool is really hard because you don't have that teacher there to push you or be on you about your grades. So I just had to have self-discipline and, you know, get it done and not get distracted. Sometimes I would have to put my phone away or, you know, it's just a lot of self-discipline and focusing and knowing your goal. Talk about self-discipline. Let's unpack that for a minute so you can tell any you know, any teenager watching this, tell us two things that you did. One, you put your phone away, but like what's something else that you did that kept you disciplined so it could help them? Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess just like if you have assignments, get them done right away, not um, waiting to the last minute to do things. Me, for doing, since I did online school, I was able to make my own schedule, which was great. But then at the same time, I also had to, uh, just like make my own schedule and know like, okay, I have assignments these days, get these done and yeah. So putting distractions away and making your own schedule. Yes. I love that. It takes so much discipline to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm impressed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So there, there are so many facets of your life I wanna talk about. The next thing I wanna go into, why pageantry? What got you into pageantry? So I was never the girl that would like grew up doing pageants. It was never forced on me. Um, my aunt competed in beauty pageants. She ran for Miss New Mexico for several times um, when she was like in her early 20s. And so my family was always like, we're never going to force it on Kira. But if she, you know, comes to us when she's older at the right age and she wants to do it, we'll support her 100 percent. And so when I was about 13, it was when I was started seeing it on TV, and I was like, okay, like this is something I would do. My mom always used to tell me, you know, like ask, talk to your aunt, see how she got involved in beauty pageants. So, I made a point to run at in 2022. So I was 15 years old, and for the Miss Nevada pageant, you can run when you're 14, 
So I ran when I was 15 years old, and um, yeah, I just, as soon as I got involved, you know, I, this was something I wanted to do. Um, as soon as I got involved, my aunt flew me out to train, and here I am. I did it again last year, and yeah. Oh, congratulations. It's such a big accomplishment, uh, and being so young. Uh, so, so you have two titles? Yes. Okay, what's the other title? So when I, my first year competing, I was Miss Battleborn Teen USA. So that was the title I had. And then this year, I'm currently Miss Las, South Las Vegas Teen USA, so. Awesome, awesome. Yes, Lana, this is, this is so, so good. <laughs> yeah. So your aunt inspired you to do this, and your mom just said, if this is something you want to do, they're going to support you. Yeah, so I didn't really know too much of my aunt's, um, I guess testimony when she ran in pageants but she has a beautiful story and uh yeah they never forced it on me and I this was something I wanted to do not because like it was forced but because um it was just a, an experience I wanted to try and I loved it and I wanted to keep doing it so yeah so what was your most difficult times when you were running so the first year I competed which was in 2022 um I actually was in a cast when I registered for the pageant. Yes, so I... Wait, let's back up. What happened? Why were you so, in a cast? So um, previously I had had surgery on my foot. I had stepped in glass. It was in my foot for like a long time. <laughs> for like six months, I was yeah. walking around with glass on my foot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I had surgery on my foot. And then when I got back into cheer, because I was cheering in high school, um, I was having like lots of like foot problems. My foot was hurting, and so finally figured out what was wrong with it. And the doctor said I had sesamo sesamoiditis, which is like bone inflammation at the bottom of your foot. So I was in a cast the first year, um, and <laughs> yeah, so I was in a cast. And um, as soon as I got it off, it was I was supposed to like not supposed to be walking not doing anything just like taking it easy on my foot no physical activity but I was already signed up for the pageant <laughs> so as soon as I got it off my aunt flew me out and I was already like training in heels and stuff but so that was that was really hard yeah so talk, talk about training in heels my friend does photography and she yes. did two photo shoots with mm -hmm. me and it's really hard, the positions she puts yes. me in. Did you find that to be uncomfortable as yes, you were doing? Yes, it was. My aunt was very hard on me, too. <laughs> like, your foot has to be right here, this posture, everything. But, um, yeah. yeah, walking in heels is very hard. Lots of dancers have um, sesamoiditis as well because they're pointing their toes a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I just had to give my foot extra love. And knowing that I was gonna be in heels for a long time and walk in heels, I had to do like lots of remedies for my foot and just, yeah, give it a lot of love. Wow, wow. So that was your biggest challenge? Yes. Yeah, what did you enjoy the most? As far as pageants? Yes. Hmm. I guess I just love like getting dressed up. I mean, that's the fun part of pageants. It's less, there's more to pe beauty pageants than just like getting dressed up and wearing right. pretty dresses. But yeah, I love the glam, the wardrobe. That's very fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. I love what you're wearing <laughs> Thank you. today. It's so cute. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love to dress up. I, I love glam. Um, so I'm with you on that. So you've published a book. Uh, you are in the process of publishing a book. Mm -hmm. What's your book about? So it's about beauty pageants. Um, I took my inspiration from why, like competing in beauty pageants and just showing, because when you, when I started to do beauty pageants, I didn't know that there was more to pageants than just wearing dresses and looking pretty. Um, and there, there's so much more than that. It's about self improvement, learning how to be better than you were yesterday. It's lots of woman empowerment, and yeah, there's just so much that beauty pageants taught me. So I took my experience from that. And I wrote it in a book, and um, now I'm showing girls through my book how to use it to be a better version of themselves. So talk to me about, you said two things, self-improvement and women empowerment. What does that look like in beauty pageant? So beauty, lots of people think that there's this like misconception that it's woman against woman, and it's really not. And so when I did it, you know, I was never used to like 
being in an environment where girls will like walk up across the room and shake your hand and like truly genuine and want you to be better and like giving you tips on like all of this. So um, there's, you know, lots of women involved who want to be better and it's very inspiring. They're not just out to like be better than the other girl, but pushing each other to be better. And um, I think the competition does help you to grow to um, be a better person. You help each other to grow. So, yeah. Did they ask you questions at the competition? Yes. So for the Miss USA system, um, they do, you have your top five on stage question and you also interview. So it um, public speaking is a big thing because um, they, you know, when you hold a title, you have to do things like podcasts and you're a representative of your state. So it's not, it's not like um, where they need girls to be like this good public speaker but yeah you have to talk about yourself and so they like to get to know you through interview yeah what was your most difficult question that they ask you uh there was so when you're in interview it's all about yourself they're just the judges are trying to get to know you so there's no really there's not a lot of pressure because you're talking about yourself however on on stage is when they hit you with the like current events and political things. So you have to, you only have like a certain amount of time to ask, answer those questions. So that was the most challenging part. Yeah. What would you say, talk to our audience and tell any um, young girls out there who wants to be, you know, in, in pageantry, what advice would you give to them? Just go for it. Um, you know, it's, you don't need to be Lots of girls um, who have wanted to get involved in beauty pageants, they think that they have had to do it like all their life or um, be a girl that's like done toddlers and TRs. And that's not true. If you want to get involved, you know, look for the systems that fit you right, that um, you want to do and just go for it. You know, don't let your height, your look, your physical attributes set you back. Like if you want to compete in a beauty pageant, learn the systems, get involved, and just go for it, and yeah. I love that, because as you're talking, I wrote down the word perfection, and and I think, um, let's go back to your book for a minute. Is that part of what you're writing about also, that you don't have to be perfect? Yes. Yeah, just go as you are if that's something you want to do. Yes, and there's so many things that a pageant can teach you. It's more than just, this is what I talk about in my book, but yeah, it's more than just, looking pretty it's about knowing yourself there's so many ways you can grow um being just being a better you and that's what beauty pageants teach you so it's you would a great say being experience. your authentic self also yes. yeah yes. don't try to be like anybody else yes for sure yeah being a better version of who you are mm-hmm. i like that i like that all right so what's next for you so I'm getting my book out there. It's soon to be published. We don't have a date, but we are publishing. I am publishing it through Amazon. And um, so once I get it out there, I'll have a date set, probably do a launch party, which is exciting. And then after that, I'm about to start taking college courses, um, financial literacy to just get more education on, you know, handling money and stuff. I'm a young teen. (laughs) Um, so there's that. And I love, um, like singing and acting. So those are two things I want to pursue in my career. That's awesome. My future. Financial literacy. Uh, How do you go from beauty pageant to (laughs) financial literacy? Well, I think writing a book, you know, there is going to be some income coming in. So I just want to learn how to be smart, making investments, um, in my future that I have a lot of goals. So I just want to learn how to be smart with money. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. So what role the mom plays in all this? <laughs> she's momager. Um, momager, I like Yeah, her. she's just doing all the behind the scenes, guiding me. Yeah. yeah. Who is your biggest role model? My biggest role model. That is hard. <laughs> um, so I volunteer with kids who are um, battling cancer, who uh, are who are suffering from like life threatening diseases and I paint with them. We do like therapeutic art sessions and those kids inspire me a lot. I love yes. that. Yeah. How did you get into that? So it's my it's a family owned nonprofit. My my aunt, she's the painter. And yeah, I just started working for the nonprofit and it's awesome. How long have you been doing that? Probably over a year now. I would say 2 years. Wow. Yes. Wow. How do you stay 
discipline and resilient like where did that come from as you were growing up you know what age did you realize like I am really disciplined I you know I can do anything I want to do when did you start realizing that well my mom she's a big supporter she's always instilled in me ever since I was a little girl that anything I want to accomplish um, in life you know it's possible it does take lots of hard work but you can do it if you go after it so yeah it's just I've always um, believed in that yeah what are your hobbies what do you like to do uh, outside of pageantry volunteering <laughs> yes so outside of pageants and all the mess um, I love to write music uh, I love to make music I have a friend I, me, I always go over to her house and we're writing music um, I just started singing for my youth ministry so that's exciting um, and making music. I love to make TikToks and like act. I don't post them. <laughs> <laughs> They're in my drafts, but uh -huh. yeah, I love like acting. Um, and I was just music. Yeah. Do you want to sing for us? Hobby. Oh, I'm not much of a singer. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a writer. Okay. Yes. Okay. But <laughs> I'm learning. That's, yeah, that's why. Yeah. I'm yeah. So you do intend to sing though. You will eventually. Yes. I mean, it's more writing. like pop. Um, I, I've never took music, singing lessons, none of that. So I'm not that experienced in that. But I, I love to write. I love to tell stories through music. And it's more about making a song rather than, um, yeah, just singing. Yeah, that's awesome. You sure you don't want to sing for us? <laughs> um, no, I actually rap. <laughs> Oh, yes, I write raps. Better. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Like, right, oh, Lana, my gosh. Let's do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, I need a, I need a beat. Okay, hang on. I'm the worst person for oh, a beat. No. I don't have any rhythm. <laughs> Hit him with that West Coast flow. Cure riding solo. Won't be no dreamy eyes. I don't fall for hip, no. Go get a hint. I keep it simple. I'm no simp, though. These boys be tripping, chasing me to kiss their lips, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You are amazing. Thank you. That was really good. Do you do this on TikTok? Can you put it on TikTok? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to... I want to um, drop my music professionally and just do it the right way. So once um, you know I'm over with the, my books and stuff like that, um, yeah, I'm going to pursue my music and do that professionally. Awesome. Do you have a morning routine? They say successful people have morning routines. So what does your, your day look like? Um, I'm very spontaneous. I think I have to be like that because of my mom. She's very spontaneous, so I kind of just go with her schedule. And um, but I do. I have like a skincare routine. I mean, I wake up, do my skincare, probably go downstairs, drink cups of coffee, and read my Bible. That's 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 my morning routine. Yeah. I love that. What's your favorite scripture? Ooh, favorite scripture. It's hard. I don't. I don't. I can't memorize scriptures by heart. But um, I love reading the gospel. I always try to, like, right now I'm reading like the Old Testament, and then I always go back and read the gospel to just like fill my mind with that. So yeah. I like that. I do that in the morning too. I do Old Testament and That's New awesome. Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Joshua one nine all the way. I Thanks. love Joshua one nine. Yeah. So I had a question, and um, I got sidetracked on this question. Well, let's see, where was I going with it? <laughs> so so tell me, you know, what is your biggest accomplishment? You've done a couple of things, but when you look at your life and you're like, this, I like this, this has been my biggest accomplishment. I would say writing a book, um, it takes lots of discipline, especially being young. I've had to sacrifice a lot. Um, I, you know, I'm a young teen. I get invited to lots of social events, but I think I've just had to sacrifice that and dedicate myself to writing a book. Um, it, you know, I love to write, so that wasn't the hard part. I was writing about something I was passionate passionate about. So, but I just think staying dedicated to that and, um, you know, having self discipline when it came to that and getting it done. Yeah. When I was writing my book, I get inspired like a. 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. I wake up at 2 uh -huh. and then I'll write till 6. Mm -hmm. Do you have a cadence or a discipline that you, you get up at a certain time or you just write whenever or do you set times to write? When I was writing it, I was on like such a great schedule because I had school. So I had like, you know, I was waking up early, going to the gym, you know, writing my book. But I think also like even now, um, 
after like while we were editing it there was stuff I'm like oh wait that's really good I want to add that and I'd go back and my mom would like get mad and get frustrated she's like Kira like you know you can't just like keep adding more and more just like get over with it um but I just yeah it, it, there's lots of stuff that inspires me and even now I'm like oh my gosh I could I could put that in there and there's just I take inspiration from lots of things yeah well you can have another book after this one yeah yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what mom, mom says. <laughs> I, I agree. My publisher did the same to me that what your mom said to uh -huh. you. They were like, stop changing. Yes. That because every time you, you change, we have to go back and look at it. Mm -hmm. And and uh, they were they were done with it. They're like, don't touch it. Just don't touch Especially it. Especially when you're a perfectionist. You always want to like critique and add more and fix. But it's you just got to. Hang on a minute. What did you just say? Especially <laughs> when we're perfectionist. Perfectionist. <laughs> so is that one of your traits, being a perfectionist? I would say so. I mean, I I like to be better than I was the day before or yesterday. You know, I always like to push myself to be better and yeah, not settle. Yeah, but that sounds more like being a better version of you than being a perfectionist. Yeah. 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 I, I don't think. I, well, I think when I'm not always like trying to be like this perfect person, but right. I always do think that I try to better myself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, I guess there's a difference. Yeah. Do you find at times sometimes you're not being your authentic self when you're in public? Um, I think as a teen, it's very hard. Um, but no, I always try to be my authentic self and try to be real. So, yeah, that's good. What would you say to a teen listening to this about being their authentic self? What advice would you give to them? Advice. Um, just be you. Uh, never try to change yourself or try to fit into, you know, groups or what people want you to be. Just be you, and you will meet people that like you for you. Yeah. I like that. Uh, Do you encounter difficulties from other people, like haters online or on social media? Um. I th no, not really like hate comments or like people like um, attacking me, but I, I do think, you know, it's, yeah, people can hate. And for that, you know, I always just try to lead with love and not take things too personally and just wish those people well and focus on myself. Yeah, that's good. So you don't read all, all the comments? And oh, no. Good for you. No. Good for you. How do you keep your mental health, um, for lack of a better term, healthy? God, Jesus, yes, I, you know, I, I'm a follower of Christ, and I'm always reading my Bible, and just pursuing a relationship with Him, and I think that helps me to have good mental health. We have that in common. Yes. Yes. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. Uh, I don't need to look anywhere else, I just bring it all yeah. to the altar, yes. and leave it there. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Do you have um, anything else you want to share with us? Uh, as far as anything, anything, okay. I want to make sure we've covered every, this is your first ever <laughs> yes. show. So I want to make sure you cover whatever you want to cover. Uh, I can't think of anything at the top of my head. That's good. It means I, it just okay. means I asked all the right okay. questions. <laughs> so what's a takeaway for our audience today? Um, I would say go buy my book, 48 Laws of Pageantry. <laughs> When it's, it'll be on Amazon soon, so yeah. if you follow my Instagram, you will see more of that. Oh, man, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, Kira, I am very impressed with you. your background, your resume, your bio, how you conduct yourself, how disciplined you are how you don't buy into negativity and you just know who you are and you know how to be your authentic self. You. And I'm so honored to have you on the Sally Allen podcast. Thank you again. And with that, friends, it's a wrap. Bye. <laughs>